you stuck it, Joe. <laughs> Stop <laughs> moving. Been to El Ranchitos, you know, the uh, kebab shop around the corner. I can't say I've tried it, to be honest. I just have a, a massive donut. Um, I'm teaching A2's next lesson as well. Anyway, what have you got to do here? Do you have a cut? Oh, uh, right. I'll, I'll tell you what exactly happened. We were filming a, a video clip to explain consumer surplus, yeah. and it was a scene in a barber shop. Now, Pete had my razor, and he actually ended up actually properly shaving some of my hair off. So, I actually went out to the hairdressers and said, Is there any way you can recover my old haircut? And uh, she said, well, no, there isn't. So I said, right, we'll better just take it all off. And this is what I've got now. So I'm stuck with this for the next couple of months. Yeah, that worries me. That's, that's Davies for you, though. Well, we've got that football match on Friday, so I think you'll, uh, you'll frighten a few players when you, you get stuck that's in that's that. That's what I was thinking as well. What are you up to, anyway? Well, this is the thing, right? I've got A2s next. And I'm yeah. just going through my Walensky here. And I know I've got a couple of bright sparks in that class. And there's one in particular. And he's going to he's gonna ask me, why does a balance sheet balance? And I'm just trying to figure out the answer. And I think the book's okay. I, I, can, I understand the theory, I just don't know. I, I think I might need a bit of help on it. We've got 10 minutes before your lesson. Right, let's go through it. What sort of business could we be? Right, okay, so, I mean, you know I like coffee. So let's go with, say, coffee, okay? So um, I'm opening a coffee shop in a local area. We're going to say maybe Millsbridge. Yeah. I think it needs a coffee shop, doesn't it? All right, so obviously you're going to buy some assets. Uh, basically, a balance sheet is going to show what the business owns and what it owes. So. Um, obviously with your assets you can have non-current assets non-current assets so a non-current asset means that it lasts for over a year over a year okay. over a year right. so yeah. we're going to put non-current assets here as our first section yeah um, now when we think about non-current assets like what sort of examples comes to mind do you think well you could have uh, something like a machine okay like machine right so yeah. I'm going to need obviously uh, machinery for my coffee shop so you think about the actual um, the coffee machines the industrial uh, fridges and industrial freezers that you require to open up a, uh, a coffee shop so uh, the price these we'll say that it's uh, 50,000 okay so our balance sheet here we're going to do it in thousands okay, okay. so we'll say 50,000 well if that is an asset that the business owns the, the key thing about a balance sheet you've got to owe that from you know that, that finance has got oh, but this is mine though this is mine yeah that's an asset but where have you financed it right or where have I got the money from to actually pay for that's this that's right because okay. this side of the balance sheet is going to show what the business owes so where's that 50,000 come from right well that 50,000 um, I actually went to the bank and to, in this in the, t in the economic times that we're in at the moment I was quite surprised when they said right here's 50,000 because I must have liked my business plan so I've got it from a, from a long-term loan I think I've got uh, I've got to pay it off over 15 years okay so you've basically got that from a a non-current liability. That's what I'm going to put on this side. A non-current liability, and you've taken out a loan for that machine, which is 50. Okay. Now this balance sheet, it's always going to balance. Whatever we have here at the bottom, it's always going to be the same because everything that's in the business, all the assets, must have come from one of the three sources, which are non-current liabilities. Um, current liabilities or equity, and we'll, we'll look at those as we go through it. Right, okay, now the next thing I, I needed for a coffee shop was obviously a building, yeah. and I managed to get a really good uh, prem premises in, um, in Millsbridge itself. Good. I'm, I'm lucky enough, once again, in the economic times that we're in, that the prices have fallen, so I ended up paying 100,000 for my building. So we're gonna put okay. building here, and this would you, you'd class this, wouldn't you, as a non-current asset? It's a non-current asset, because it's obviously gonna last for more than a year. Absolutely. So you've put 100,000 on there, how are you going to finance that building? Uh, well, I'm, re I'm really fortunate because Pete Sylvester actually said he wanted to become a partner in my coffee shop. All right. And don't ask me where he got this from, but he suddenly happened to have 100,000. Right. So he's actually invested 100,000 into my business. But I'm, this is where I struggle because I don't know where I put that on my balance sheet. Well, what we need to have here is, is on somewhere uh, we need to have share capital. And what you're saying to me is that you've sold share capital to a, a partner in the business. Um, and you've raised a hundred thousand for that. So I'll, I'll call this section here share capital and reserves, or equity as it's sometimes known. So the, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that in some books. They call it equity capital. This third section. Though. Yeah, it just means share capital. Just another right. term for that. But if we were to add those now, 150, 150, it's going to balance. No problem. All right. So we're, do, we're doing okay. So we're doing far. okay. We're doing right. And we've got about eight minutes till these students arrive. We've right. Through. Come on. Right, let's, let's go. Right, what next one. Um, well, I need a van as well because I'm planning to actually do some deliveries to local businesses in the area, so like industrial estates, business parks, and that. Um, the van I'm getting is costing me fifty thousand, 
From what? I don't know if I'd be ripped off here. It better have, I don't know, le nice le band. leather seats, chrome finishing, but 50 grand is what it's costing. Yeah. Um, but once again, it's, um, you're telling me that that's going to have to appear on the other side of this balance sheet. It is, it is. It's going to have to go somewhere. Um, I reckon, you know, with that van, you know, it, it might go under here because didn't you say something about return profits? Or? Yeah, well, from the previous year, uh, when I opened it, I opened it towards the back end of the financial year, I did really well, probably because of my, you know, my, my, my smile, my customer service, and the quality of the coffee I sell. So I've actually decided to plough back some of these profits and put them back into the business. So it's actually ended up paying for my van. Okay. So, um, so that van has been funded through what we call reserves, which are retained profits from previous years that you've ploughed back into the business. So we've got 50,000 there in reserves and that balances out your van. Okay. So at the moment, this, this gives us a snapshot of how much the business is worth. But I've got loads of coffee that I've bought in. I've got loads of stock. Can I put this in the balance sheet? Because I think that should be that should help okay. value my business. Well, it's an asset, isn't it? You know, stock is an asset. So if we can have a, a separate heading here for your current assets, and that's your assets that will change within the year. You know, within a year. Quite often. So they're they're very very different to non-current assets. That's right. They're not going to be in the business for a long period of time, but they'll be coming in and out of the business, and they'll be changing within the year. Okay. Now I know that. Um, Stock uh, on balance sheets nowadays is actually called inventory. I think it's like an American word. It's like a, I asked a student once, what's the American word for stock? And she said, stock. But um, inventory is what we put down, I'm afraid. So we're going to put inventory right here. That's right. And the inventory, now the value I put on it came to actually 20,000. It's quite premium coffee beans that I actually use as well. Okay. Okay, so. How have you, how have you found that? How have you financed that 20,000? Uh, well, I, I got it from suppliers, but I haven't paid them yet, so it's actually um, money I do owe, I'm going to have to pay at some stage, but they've given me quite generous trade credit. Okay, so how long, how long have they given you to pay back? Uh, I've been given 60 days, uh, so... Okay, so anything you've got to pay back within one year on a balance sheet is called a current liability, and we need to have that heading here, current liabilities. And what we've put under there is the term creditors. Okay, so creditors are people that you, you owe money to. Um, the name for this now that people tend to use is, is payables. You know, I mean, we could put the term payables under there, but it's basically um, finance that you're going to have to pay soon to your suppliers. So payables, uh, 20? Yeah, absolutely. That's how much my inventory was, uh, was valued at. Um, I also have cash as well that I hold. Um, it's, it's cash that I have in a bank account, but essentially it's, it's extra money or finance that I've got. And that should also, shouldn't that be included? Because that's part of your value of your business. It's a current asset, definitely. You can put your cash under current assets, but where did that cash come from? Uh, well, I'm being a bit cheeky here. I actually got it from an overdraft, which I had uh, put on my bank account uh, when I first <laughs> opened the business. See, I made you. Well, we need to put that under here. You know, this is what's financed the business. So an overdraft is, again, something you're going to have to pay off in the next 12 months so an overdraft and you said it was 10 so that would go on here okay so what have we got so far we've got 230 on this side and i've got i've got 230 here as well you didn't lie about this did you mark I didn't you lie. said you said to me this would balance i never lie to you joe you've got two minutes to get to that classroom and you've balanced a balance sheet okay very, very good so i should be good to go you're just about ready you're just about ready the only thing i would say with this balance sheet this is the kind of old-fashioned way of doing it We've got the assets and they're all financed by what the business owes. So we've got what the business owns, what it owes. Um, there's been a couple of changes since the 1985 Companies Act and we do, do need to rearrange a couple of things. But uh, what we'll do is, when you've done your next lesson, we'll come back in here, we'll rearrange it and we'll do uh, another little video. How about that? That sounds like a plan. I think I'm going to need two lessons to teach this anyways. Yeah. All right, okay. fantastic. Good stuff, so good luck with your lesson. Thank you, and uh, uh, I might go back to finishing off Wilinski. I want to look at these progress questions at the end of the chapter, yeah. so. Good stuff. All right, thanks All very right. much. Nice one. Cheers.